This is too intense for one day. Totally nearly burnt the house down, so take two. This is nothing like I have ever tasted in my life. Hi, I'm Sethi and I'll be challenging my friend Vishal to make Iranian food for the day. Hey, my name is Vishal. I am from BuzzFeed India and I live in Mumbai. And today I'm going to swap a meal with my dear friend Seppi. I've not cooked much Indian cuisine and I'm so ready for it. I don't have much idea about Iranian cuisine, but I know for a fact that we Indians do have a lot of influences from there. It'll be interesting to see how our foods overlap. The meals I've selected for Vishal are, the first dish is one of my absolute favorites, Khorish Khayme with chips, and of course, rice and tadi. The second dish is the iconic dessert, the dishes that I've selected for Seppi are egg masala curry with roti. This is one of my most favorite meals to eat. And for dessert, we have Assamese rice pudding called payo. Let's get to cooking and nusha jaan. The first recipe that I'm giving Seppi is a quintessential egg masala curry. This is one of my most favorite curries and it's really close to my heart because I learned to make it during the lockdown. For this recipe, Seppi will have to take four hard-boiled eggs and slice them into halves. Cut two medium-sized onions and fry them until they are brown. And then in a mixer grinder, coarse grind the fried onions. Oh! 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 Is that it? And then take a cooking pot and add the oil, add the cloves, cardamom and cinnamon. After stirring for a bit, add the ginger garlic paste. Oh! Totally nearly burnt the house down, so take two. Now add the chopped tomatoes and then let it cook for a bit. Now add the salt, the red chili powder, the coriander powder, the cumin powder, the continue cooking for about two minutes. At this point, the tomatoes should become almost like a paste. This is where the curry has started brewing. Now you can add the curd and mix it. Now you can add the onions into the curry. After that, you can add the garam masala to it and let it cook for about a minute more. Add water so that your curry doesn't burn. Now add the sliced eggs with the yolk facing downwards. Let the spices seep into the egg, then turn the eggs over. Now you can garnish this curry with kasuri methi or fresh coriander. I personally like fresh coriander. Seppi, it'll be a test of our friendship, which one you go with. The next item in today's meal is of course rotis. Rotis are flatbreads made out of whole wheat flour and it's round. I can't make them round. Mine are usually trapezoid. <laughs> well, I'm not too confident, I'm not gonna lie. As long as it tastes okay, I hope it'll be fine. And then you have to cook them on a flat pan. If you don't have a flat pan, good luck. This egg curry and roti combo really slaps every time I make it. Mm. Oh, this is insane. Thank you, Michelle. I, I, I'm speechless. Let's get a bit of the egg. Mm. I've never had a curry which is like an egg curry. I'm not going back. The great thing about it is it just packs so much flavor. I do think I didn't make the roti very well. Also, this dish is very different to Persian cooking. We don't have a lot of curries with these sort of spicy spices in. We use a lot of herbs and I'm totally here for it. So the first dish I'll be getting Bashar to make is one of the most iconic stews, Khorish Khayme. This is a super aromatic dish, and whenever somebody makes this at a family gathering, I'm the first one at the sofre. So firstly, heat up some oil in a big pan and fry your onions. Then add the turmeric, pepper, and fry it until golden. Now remove two tablespoons of onion and set aside for later. Now add the lamb and fry with the onions. Once the meat has browned, add half of the cinnamon, coriander, curry, and cardamom powder, and fry for a few minutes. The spices are really doing their magic. Now add some hot water and allow it to come to a boil. While the meat is cooking, heat up some oil and add some yellow split peas, then some tomato paste. Then add some hot water and boil for 15 minutes. Now add this mixture to the meat and give it a good stir. Here's your dried limes and add them to the stew. I don't have dried lime. I searched it all over the place. So I called Seppi and asked her if I can just use lime squeezed in. So I'm just gonna do that. Cover with a lid and let it cook on a low heat for three to four hours. This is key in Persian cooking. Timing is everything. We are going to go over to the next dish, which is rice with tadik. Once you've parboiled your rice, add oil to the base and add your rice back in. Let it cook, but keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. This is too intense for one day. It's time to flip. Good luck, Vishal. 
Okay, wait. How do we do this? How do we do this? You got this, Vishal. I trust you. Here we go. Whoa. That was intense. Time to reveal. Oh no. I think we burnt a little bit. Back to the game. Now your stew should have turned more of a deep red colour. Time to add the salt, saffron, onions and the rest of the spices. For the topping, fry your chips. This is an important touch for Reime. Now it's time to serve. Nushe John. Before even taste testing it all together, I can tell I'm going to cook this again at some point. Let's dig in. Oh my god. Absolutely amazing, Seppi. Give me a moment, okay? This is nothing like I have ever tasted in my life. I can't say what it is. It's so comforting. The flavors are like so chaotic, but still it's all together. It's beautiful. Baba. Baba. For the dessert recipe, I wanted to give Seppi something from my home state of Assam. Payok is Assamese rice pudding. What makes it really, really unique is the use of Joha rice. I already have an issue. I don't have Joha rice. Is Basmati okay? I hope it's okay. What rice? Basmati. Basmati. Yes, just go ahead. Best of luck. Thank goodness. Let's continue. I love the smell of payok. It provides me so much comfort. Emotions were ullai poremane. For this recipe, Seppi will have to take the rice and soak it in water for 30 minutes. Boil the milk and when the milk starts boiling, lower the flame and add the bay leaves. Then add the soaked rice and the cardamom and give it a nice stir. In the low flame, cook this for about 15 to 20 minutes until the rice is cooked. Add the jaggery or sugar according to your taste. It shouldn't be too sweet. When the jaggery or the sugar is melted, you can add the cashew nuts and the raisins. And then you can continue cooking for about 10 more minutes. Now you can add the condensed milk. If you're going to add condensed milk, it does add a little bit of a different flavor. Now turn off the stove and let the pie off cool down. It will get thicker as it cools. Now you can serve it in a bowl. You can garnish it with some cashew and raisins, whatever you like. You can also serve it right away warm or you could also put it in a fridge for some time and serve it cold, which is also great. I like both. I'm actually a bit nervous to try this because it's really similar to some Persian desserts we have like Shir Berenj and Sholizad. And I don't really like those desserts. Let's dig in. This is actually better than I thought it would be. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest fan of raisins, but the raisins in this actually add such a nice texture. I'm not mad at it. I know the condensed milk was optional, but I'm so glad I added it. I think if I didn't add the condensed milk, it wouldn't have been right for me. And this dish really feels like a lovely warm hug. So thank you, Vishal, for putting this on the menu. I've been very pleasantly surprised with this one. Vishal will be making the beautiful faludeh. This traditional dessert originates from Shiraz in Iran and it contains vermicelli noodles with a frozen rose water syrup. I know faludeh is very popular in India, but I have never had faludeh in my life. Firstly, Vishal will pour water and sugar into a pot and place this on heat to dissolve the sugar. Once cooled, add your rose water and stir. Smells so good. There you go. Refrigerate the syrup for a few hours. The mixture should become thicker as time passes. Oh my God, look at this. Now it's time to boil the noodles. Once cooked, drain and pour cold water on the noodles. I don't think I got the right vermicelli for this. To avoid wastage, I'm just gonna use this. I think it's gonna taste the same though, but the texture is going to be a little different, so yeah. Sorry. Now cut the noodles with scissors. Add the noodles to the frozen syrup and mix. Now add a squeeze of lime and a bit of cherry syrup on top if you have any. And now you have a bowl of falude. Mmm. My God, the rose water is really doing it for me. Oh my God, what a lovely, lovely dessert. Thank you so much, Seppi, for introducing me to all of this. Have I become a Faluda fan now? I have never had Faluda in my life. Who knows? Only time will tell. I just want to thank you, Vishal, for the recipes. I had such a great time and I really hope you enjoyed my Iranian dishes. Catch you in the next one.